everything always comes down to information, right? Citizens that are educated cannot be fooled. They cannot be manipulated. If people know how things work, it's very difficult to lie to them, to create some kind of diversion, to fool them. Once we have a cashless society and digital currency, governments have full control over money flow and spending habits, of course, and they can do what they want with your money. <laughs> your money is your freedom, right? All right, this is Mike Sigula from Trifiri.com and welcome to another video. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Hope everything is okay in your life and uh, always stay positive. Even when I talk about negative topics or some kind of darker things, my goal is to raise awareness and uh, just to understand nature of the problem and then we always try to think about solutions as much as we can. So today we're gonna talk about what's wrong, what's the problem, because I think these topics are really important. But then I'm gonna at least try to give you some ideas of potential solutions. So it's not gonna be fear mongering. This is uh, more to kind of make people think and I'm overall very optimistic about where humanity is heading. This is my view. I think we're gonna get on the right track. You know, I've been doing this work for a very long time, even working online for like 13 years already now. And I can see that so many people are waking up. So many people are more conscious than ever, especially the last few years. So I'm very optimistic overall. So let's talk about some of the biggest threats to our freedom. So. In my view, the biggest threat to our freedom, democracy, is control of information flow and censorship. Everything always comes down to information, right? Citizens that are educated cannot be fooled. They cannot be manipulated. If people know how things work, it's very difficult to lie to them, to create some kind of diversion, to fool them and people who are educated they can see through the bs bullshit before it even uh, materializes so it's always down to information and this always has been the thing for centuries that the governments and the people in power understood that they need to win the public or they need to lie to the public to get their goals, to get their results, right? To get uh, whatever they needed, whatever they wanted. And this is one of the biggest threats now, in my view, because many people think that we are living in an era of free information flow, but it's becoming more and more controlled. For example, most of the information flow today comes through the internet. and. Most of the internet or vast majority of that flow of information is controlled by a handful of corporations, right? Google, being one of the biggest search engines in the world with more than 90% of, of the market, apart from China. And then we have YouTube, which is the largest video platform owned by Google and Alphabet, right? The parent company. Then we have Facebook, and Instagram, same company, Meta, Twitter, TikTok. And that's literally where, apart from China, because China has different rules, but rest of the world, this is where most of the information flows through today. This is like 90 plus percent of information flow, which is basically supervised and monitored by a handful of corporations. And these corporations, currently and for the last few years started controlling what type of information is published, how this information is published, what gets seen, what doesn't get seen, and what is considered misinformation according to them. It's what they think is the misinformation, right? So many people think that, you know, 
internet is free, right? You have independent media, they can publish about anything they want. Not really, because if you don't agree with the current mainstream narrative, very quickly before your story gets viral, before it's gonna go out, you get fact checkers, fact checkers, right? Boom, he think, you know, they're gonna say this is false and the uh, algorithm's gonna hide this information and that's gonna get seen and, and you know, the, the reach gonna decrease and things like that. So I know very well how it works because I've had to deal with these types of things many times. And I can tell you that most people don't get real information. They only get propaganda. They only get what is allowed to be seen. Anything that does not agree with the mainstream narrative is not allowed and is quickly getting censored, hidden, and that's it. So we are hearing, for example, that governments are pushing that social media companies or these tech giants should be responsible for spreading misinformation, right? On their platforms and maybe they're gonna be having some penalties, some kind of uh, trouble, but who decides what is misinformation? This is the big problem here because what was misinformation a year ago now is taken seriously, right? An example is, for example, the COVID uh, story with lab leak versus Wuhan market. And I can tell you because I got censored on True Theory two years ago, we got censored for publishing just normal story where we showed a second group of experts saying that maybe the lab leak theory is correct and then we get fact checkers censoring us, reducing our reach on social media and get, getting us in a lot of trouble saying no, you know, the scientific community is certain that the virus originated from the Wuhan market and um, you are not allowed to give voice to other other group of experts it wasn't even like we supported them <laughs> we just you know that's what journalists do they just give voices to different people that's it but no this is not true and then obviously one year later biden says this is possible and now it's kind of uh, the debate that the other side of the story could be true this is an example of how dangerous these pseudo fact checkers are because they don't really check facts. Of course, they're gonna find flaws in things, which happens, you know, this is internet. There are millions of people posting stuff all the time. There's gonna be always misinformation, always. But what they really do is that they make sure that the other side of the story is not heard. So anything that do not agree with the current mainstream narrative is being censored. This is really what they do. So it's not about checking facts, it's about making sure that the public does not see anything questionable, anything that is not agreeing with the mainstream narrative. Let me give you another example. So imagine like the story with, you know, 2003 invasion of Iraq and the whole intelligence community claimed that, you know, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, right? So preemptive strike, let's invade, right? and turned out to be a lie a pretext for invasion obviously surprise and um, if you would have fact checking back then anyone who would question that would get censored right because no 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 there is evidence and the intelligence community is certain that they have weapons of mass destruction right <laughs> so you know Perhaps these activists who did not believe in these lies could maybe stop the war, for example, right? If there would be enough of backlash, right? So if you would have a fact checker censoring the voices that do not agree with intelligence community, that is certain, of course. So this is why the control of information censorship under pretext of fact checking, which has nothing to do with fact checking most of the time is really dangerous. In my view, people always should be allowed to hear both sides of the story and then they should make their decisions because once you get into details, hmm, rarely anything is black or white. 
it actually gets very complicated and not that clear once you get into details. That's why people need to be allowed to have opinions and listen to both groups. But what they want to do with censorship is just to make sure that you're not going to hear the other side of the story and you're going to only hear the experts that agree with our propaganda, right? This is why it's dangerous. And I can tell you that every single one of the companies I mentioned out of the big tech is censoring information very, very heavily. And uh, we had evidence of that many times. There were whistleblowers. Like, for example, you can research a guy called Zach Voorhees who worked at Google and he was exposing how they censor information, how, how they hide uh, search results that they don't want to promote, things like that. Happens all the time. So this is a massive problem because it's always down to information. If people are educated, if they can get opinions from both sides, they can make more informed, more rational decisions. But obviously they keep trying to make it harder and harder. So what are the solutions? Obviously first, understanding that there is a problem. Another thing is really supporting independent activists and media, such as us. Of course, we are one of few left. Because I can tell you that independent media doesn't have budgets, doesn't have money, doesn't have anything. It relies on some little bit of money and hard work of people who are very, very committed. And sometimes maybe some donations, Patreon, whatever things. So we often have a lot of difficulties to continue because we get censored, you know, we don't have funding to create content, things like that. And really the solution is in people. Like if 1% of the people who get content from us for free would just donate or, or like support us on Patreon, whatever, many of the problems could be solved, you know? But unfortunately, People are always selfish and this is the problem. I know many, many people who had uh, independent media blogs, outlets, pages, they got censored and demonetized and they had to, you know, move into other things in life because they just couldn't sustain that. So think about these things, support these activists, these independent pages, independent media outlets, blogs, YouTubers, whatever, because they often need your help and uh, I can tell you that because that's what we've been going through. We've been going through a lot of issues with demonetization, uh, algorithm issues, all sorts of things like that. So that's one of the things you can do. Always sharing content as well from independent media uh, and starting your own pages, your own blogs, your own video content, whatever, TikTok or other platforms to just create content yourself and be the voice. All right, thread number two, in my view, cashless society or central bank digital currency. Similar thing or same idea, why this is really dangerous for freedom and democracy. Once we have a cashless society and digital currency, governments have full control over money flow and spending habits, of course, and they can do what they want with your money. <laughs> your money is your freedom, right? So we saw recently, for example, what happened with uh, truckers in Canada who were protesting vaccine mandates and governments would freeze the donations coming from people to support them, freeze their bank accounts, basically. And uh, this is an example exactly of the power of governments over your funds. Once you have digital currency controlled by governments and banks you know they they know everything about you they know how you spend your money what you own what do you do with your money if you pay taxes everything how much money you have and and they can decide they can block it as they want when they want if you are not a good citizen right like these truckers peacefully protesting <laughs> so this is why it's very very dangerous Solutions? No, obviously more people need to be aware because they're gonna promote it as something good, right? Ah, don't use cash. You just, you know, have a chip. Just tap and boom, everything works well. So solution could be 
trying to use more cash for sure because they want to eliminate cash basically and make sure that the money flows through their systems and they have these big data companies and algorithms analyzing the behaviors and spending habits of the population. So this is, in my view, one of the big threats uh, to freedom currently being rolled out and tested already. And finally, number three is transhumanism and AI agenda. In my view, this is also one of the biggest threats to our freedom. Why? I mean, technology is good, right? <laughs> technology helps us in many ways, but it can get out of hand and goes way too far. And this is exactly what is the plan. I've been hearing about these things 20 years ago. People were talking about microchips, how this is the big plan of the elite to microchip the population. And what do we see now? We see Elon Musk very nicely and swiftly presenting himself as this hero guy who is actually building a network of 5G satellites and the most advanced microchip that's going to be installed in people's brains to connect them all into their, his network so he's the one in charge, under control. Right, right, sounds like a great, great, great idea. And obviously, you know, they always gonna sell it to you as something useful, as something beneficial, as something gonna be good for you. You're gonna stream music directly to your brain or watch movies. You're gonna access languages and internet through your thinking only. Sounds really good. We're gonna heal disabled people. This is always the same thing. To make people think that this is a good stuff, right? This is a solution, it's gonna help me, it's gonna improve my life. But in fact, you're gonna become a little slave, fully automated robot, very, very dangerous, hackable, hackable, because, you know, when your brain is connected to the network, you become hackable human being and then you rely on some guy who has uh, ego issues all the time that's gonna be having a full control over you like like a real little robot right no, this is extremely dangerous on many many levels have a look at some of my other videos because i talk about this a lot i, I see it as one of the biggest threats over the next 20 years transhumanist agenda same with ai automation for example destroys jobs and we are hearing that within a couple of years most likely uh, a lot of the jobs will disappear a lot of small business is not going to be needed and then people are gonna rely on universal basic income right <laughs> i made a video about it uh, this is what the world economic forum talks about that you will own nothing and be happy and we're gonna own everything right so you rely on money coming from us and if you are not a good citizen you're not gonna eat <laughs> this is the plan this is and it's connected with ai because these systems like transhumanism ai and automation all are leading towards distraction of small businesses making uh, workers redundant right and then everything is in power of a massive corporations and governments and people just have to rely on them and listen to them and <laughs> this is never good never good it's always good to have competition we see what's happening with when you know big tech is becoming almost like monopolies and they control the information flow Ah, oh, no, we don't like that. This is misinformation, right? You're not going to watch that. So this is what happens when we give too much power in hands of governments and corporations. They now decide what you see that you're going to do. And if you don't do what we tell you, ah, oh, you're not going to eat. You're not going to have freedom. No, 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 no. We saw that recently with uh, digital ideas and COVID passports where people couldn't do basic stuff without having them. So this is always the same thing. It's just trying to push it one way or another. So solutions, raising awareness, making more people interested in these things. People need to understand why 
these things are dangerous. And supporting small businesses as much as possible because only large corporations have enough money to develop complex systems and improve automation. So if you support Amazon, for example, you are allowing that to unfold because they destroy small businesses and they have all the money to create more invasive technologies. So supporting these people, especially like Musk, not buying Teslas, not investing in his companies, things like that, because they are really the ones developing these things. The more we spend money on small businesses, the more balance there is and the less of that can develop. This is one example, you know. I'm not saying it's easy because I, I use big business as well myself, but I think about these things more and more and I, whenever I can, I try to uh, have a little bit of balance, you know, instead of buying there, I'm gonna go here, things like that. So it's about this kind of uh, more and more people make these choices, more and pe more people are aware and it's a gradual kind of uh, thing in my view. All right, so these are three examples of, in my view, some of the biggest threats to our freedom. And there are obviously more. And uh, like I'm saying, this is not fear mongering. I'm overall very optimistic about where we are heading. I think people are waking up so much. More and more people are becoming conscious these days. And I'm overall optimistic that Things gonna fold in the right direction, but these types of videos are kind of to make people think a little bit more. Maybe some of this information is new for you. Share it with your friends if you can. So more people kind of start thinking about these things. This is not fear mongering. My aim is not to scare people with these things. I wanna just raise awareness so more people think about these things and then they can make better choices to change the system. And I think this is how we can kind of uh, collaborate. So if you want to support us, check out patreon.com forward slash truefury. You can become a little supporter. Um, your support is always appreciated and we definitely need it. Because <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not easy, as I said, trying to create controversial content that gets constantly censored and demonetized so thank you for watching my video and please share it with others and till next time